Hi there, welcome. For those people or who already know about what I'm going to show you, please skip forward and go and check the moulds out that I'm casting. Uh, they're done? Right, okay. This is for the people that are, if you're going to dabble into casting, just a few of the items that you actually need to actually get yourself started. The first thing I'll start with, the most important, is casting powder. I should put that one there. Uh, the first one is a Herculite 2. Now this is a good all-round casting powder. It will do all of your moulds. But saying that, I do use two casting powders and this is the Crystalline R. This is a porcelain finish plaster which is extremely hard. I use this for the more delicate pieces like tiles, uh, slates, little things like that so they're both good quality uh, casting powders i will put a link in the description uh, where you can actually get these from uh, you can actually get these off ebay but other countries i don't know what, which country you're you're in you might have to find an equivalent to it right that is the main main thing that's the most important i'll stress that now is to get a good quality casting plaster to cast in rubber silicon moulds. Plaster of Paris is no good, don't even think about it, or decoration filler or anything like that. You will not get good results. Right, moving along, what we have is a set of digital scales. The set of digital scales is for measuring weight wise your casting powder. Most, well, all casting powders will come to either a, a two to one ratio or a three to one ratio, which is one milliliter of water to two grams of casting powder. So you need a set of scales to measure that out accurately. Uh, the next thing, well, well, I'll move these things in because I think a lot of them are out of shot. A spoon, well, the spoon's for fishing up your powder. There's nothing too technical about that. There isn't nothing too technical you need. A paintbrush, that is for mixing your plaster and also for painting pigments or paints into your moulds. That's a basic thing. A basic scraper, any shape or size, this is for cleaning off the tops of your moulds. We move along, mixing containers. These can be yogurt pots, they can be anything you like, as long as you can mix them. We also have a disposable syringe. This is a 10 mil syringe. Uh, you'll find that most of the moulds, you won't go over 12 mil. Actually, this is it goes up to 12 mil, this one does. They're very cheap to get hold of, and you will get an accurate mix by using something like this. Next to it, we have a piece of plastic. This is to actually put your moulds on. I'll bring a mould down. The moulds are quite flexible and soft. This is just so when you cast, you can cast into your mould and you can actually move it away, put it somewhere safe to dry, because if you pick it up, as you can see, you're going to end up breaking your parts, damaging them, and things like that. Put that mould back in its place. Now, another thing that you need is a plastic container and some rinse age. Now the rinse age aid is for soaking your moulds in before you cast in them. You will do a small amount into their water, put your mould in into it and soak it then partially, partially dry it off before you start casting. The rinse aid helps release, well it breaks the water tension in the plaster and helps release the air bubbles from the face of the mould so you do get decent parts. Now, uh, colours. There are already done, there's two videos out. One on pigments, which is, I use the Vallejo pigments and there's also one out on paints. 
I use the Vallejo paints. It's just that that's what I have to hand. There's two videos out. The choice is yours on what colours and how you do it. If you're going to do a lot of casting, I would recommend pigments. If it's going to be little bits and pieces and you don't want to buy pigments and you've got paints in your uh, box, you can use paints quite easily and just as good as pigments. So that is your colouring. We move on now. Uh, I have a small vibrating table which I made myself. There is a video out how to actually make this particular vibrating table. It shows you, tells you all the parts that you need, how to do it, everything. If you don't want to build a vibrating table, you can actually get away with using a piece of plastic and getting a piece of foam rubber or sponge, placing it on, tapping it with your finger. That will do just as well. Uh, failing that, you can actually use a compressor. Start your compressor up on your board and just gently lay it on top of the compressor. The vibrations will do exactly the same job as well. So there's three options there if you require to for a vibrating table. Moving on, the final thing, and I will stress this because this has caused quite a few marital breakups, is I'll just move the camera slightly. Is a container to wash up in. Uh, you need a container to wash up in for the simple reason is when you mix the plaster with the water, the water is only a medium to hold the plaster and the plaster will sink and harden under water. So if you wash your cups up, your moulds, that will go down the drain and it will block your sink up straight away. So if you get yourself a largest container that you can actually put stuff, wash stuff up and get it cleaned up. So that's it. So next up is how to cast the moulds. Okay everybody, welcome. And today we'll be moulding the slate. Now this is a very, very fine little slate and we have to do this slightly different to the normal way but to start off with I'll get this into the rinse aid and we'll start by going through what we have to do. Now uh, this is quite a small mould so we're going to be going for eight mils of uh, water and 16 grams of uh, casting powder. The casting powder I'm going to be using is Crystallite R. Simple reason is it's a lot stronger and this is a very fine, fine uh, little tile. Actually we've even got finer ones than that. So we'll get on with that, we'll get a cup, we'll get some mixed up. While that's having a soak. So Eight gram, eight milliliters of water. Move that one over there because we won't be using it. And sixteen grams of casting powder. And I'll state this every time. Try and be as accurate as you can with your measuring out. Saves you a lot of money, a lot of waste, and also being accurate with it makes it flow a lot lot easier which cuts down on your air bubbles and cuts down on your rejects so just keep that in mind every time so we put the casting powder in the water we'll get the mold out quick dry quick tap onto our board now i'm going to Add just a touch of black to the uh, mix to give us a grey and also into the mould I'm going to put some black like so now 
Now, this is the only mould when you put paint in that you really want to pour from a height because normally when you pour from a height it pushes everything out and you really want this on these tiles and you'll see the reason when we turn them out. So, oh, I'm blocking the camera there. Go, let that vibrate away. Now, I said we have to do this differently. We have to actually, uh, I call it plating. And um, what we actually use is another piece of perspex, which I should bring down there to get a bit of cloth. Is that a wipe? Now, this will actually go on top to give you a, a flat tile but this perspex is quite old uh, it's got a lot of scratches on so i had just a touch of vaseline or petroleum jelly whichever you want to call it because of the scratches it just helps it release if you've got glass even better uh, because you don't have to do this on pieces of glass but i prefer perspex because you don't end up cutting yourself and getting glass that's all beveled on the edges works out extremely expensive. Okay, we'll switch that off. Now I'm going to put you on pause because we're just going to leave that a little while to start curing off and then I'll be back. Okay, it's been a few minutes. The top is just starting to go off. Now, the plate we Vaselined up, what you actually do is lay it on top at an angle. I'm hoping you can see that. And then from the edge at an angle, press down and then let that go through and push out all the excess plaster. But then what you do is you give it a few circular motion rubs I don't know if you can see that, but keep pressure on it all the time. Do not remove pressure. If you lift your, if you take the pressure off now, it will draw the air in and destroy your parts. Then what you get is, this is a one litre bottle of water. Stand that on top and then you can release the pressure because the water in the bottle is applying the pressure. And then you leave it. So we will come back to that in a short while and then we will take them out and we'll have a look at the parts okay i'm going to try and get this done before we get too much noise around us okay it's been sat here for quite a while and depending on how long you leave it is how you have to actually get it off but a short time you can just twist the top and it will come off but it's not going to happen because it's been sat here for a long time we've had a lot of noise a lot of people in the gardens children screaming so we take it off like that cleaning the edges off and if we very gently lift it off normally it leaves the parts as you can see on the board like that now we just leave them to dry and they're very easy to get off uh, because we're on the Vaseline you just push them as you can see that they move you just push them off with your scraper and job the good one and they do come out really nice parts uh, I think we can focus in on that is the camera going to focus yeah well and they are some really nice parts so that's the slates so thank you very much for joining me and we'll see you on the next one